Joining us on our book talk segment, great to welcome back a man who has written another one of his very interesting books about uh, things that uh, we see every day and may not know much about. This one's called A Walk Around the Block, Spot, uh, Stoplight Secrets, Mischievous Squirrels, Manhole Mysteries, and other stuff you see every day and know nothing about. And we're joined by uh, Spike Carlson today. And Spike, good to talk with you. How are you? Good. And, and I want to compliment you for reading that whole title uh, in one breath. Well, you, 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 you authors write these books, so you deserve to have the whole, whole title read. <laughs> 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 and I did, I did do the one, but yeah, I, I was looking through the archive, Spike, and we had talked before, I think it was eight years ago, we had you on when you had the woodworking FAQ book out, so good to have you back. I, I'm sure you've been doing well. Yeah, it's good Yeah, it's good to be, I've been cranking out some other books. Uh, this is probably the most fun book I've maybe ever worked on. Uh, it, it, it just, I had so many fun experiences doing it and met so many interesting people that uh, uh, it's really worked its way to the top of the list. I should just say for the maybe the two people that uh, are listening that, that don't know. I mean, you're known as an editor of uh, uh, books, uh, a carpenter, woodworking is kind of your specialty. So uh, uh, this kind of fits in a bit because you, you talk about things that, uh, we like we say, we see every day, but we're not quite sure uh, either how it got there or how it works, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, you and I and your listeners, they, we read books on climbing Everest and going down the Amazon and traveling to the moon, and we don't really know much about the world outside our front door, and it's an amazing world. Um, if, it's full of intrigue and mystery and fun, and uh, there's so many vital things uh, out there that we don't know about that keep us alive each day that um, it was a good book to write. And, and you did a lot of it uh, in your own home area, right? You're up in Minneapolis. Is that right? I did, but, you know, it's called the Walk Around the Block, but it was a very big block. It extended from uh, San Francisco to, to Minneapolis to Alabama to New York to Paris. And um, so I kind of tried to get a good cross-section of the country uh, and kind of find the best stories to, uh, to talk about each subject. And you really, like you said, you get into the things that we all notice every day and and i didn't know a lot of it obviously i didn't know but uh, from reading through the book but uh you know you'd have a good chapter in there about the front porch a lot of people don't even know what a front porch is anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've surely moved into the into the backyard you know the the automobile uh, kind of uh, the, the front porch used to be a social center and right. a news center and a and a place where you would court people and and and, uh, and meet people and that's kind of moved uh, into the backyard and it doesn't happen as much anymore um, but in this day and age of, of, uh, of pandemic and things it's 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 kind of a part public part private place um, people feel comfortable interacting uh, it's outside I think neighbors feel uh, more neighborly it um, it's a great addition you know curb appeal to the house talk about great curb appeal and and it's got a decent and, you know, pay back when you sell the house. So um, porches are more than just an architectural element. They're, they have a real social side to them. And before early air conditioning was uh, almost mandatory in a house, you know, you sat out there at night, right, in the summertime. That was the only place to get cool. Yeah, you, <laughs> exactly. You, you'd sleep out there, you'd eat out there. Uh, it, it was the social hub. Uh, another one I, which I thought was interesting, and again, we see it every day. If you, if you own a house, even if you have an apartment, uh uh, but, uh, well, actually, you know, dri driving around town, these big water towers, and then, uh, of course, the meters on the house that measure the water. Uh, I don't think anybody understands that. We've been paying that bill for years, but we don't quite understand how that works. Well, what are those things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I looked into the water thing because, you know, where does it come from? I, I live near a river, but my water comes from, from underground. And uh, just to give you an example, in the Twin Cities, uh, St. Paul pulls its water out of the Mississippi River, you know, purifies it, and then uh, after it's used, dumps it back into the river uh, 20 miles downstream from there. Oh. And then from that point, 17 more 17 million more people downriver use that same water. And so it points to the, you know, how necessary it is to have, um, you know, the machinery and mechanism and technology in place to really purify things and, and keep the water clean, keep the environment clean. In 1920, they did a, a study of that area downriver uh, from St. Paul, 
And they found, uh, in a 40-mile stretch, they found three live fish. <laughs> that was it. Um, because uh, that's what we used to do with uh, sewage, was just dump it right into the river. So we have uh, technology to, to thank for our health and uh, and so many other things. And, and those water towers that every town seems to have, what, what, do they use for anything anymore, or what, what do they do? <laughs> I can never figure that out. Well, there, Is that an overflow? Yeah, they... <laughs> no, that is the source. They, the pumps pump it up there and then uh, gravity feeds it okay. and um, so if there's a electrical failure or anything else you still have uh, water that flows naturally by, by gravity so they're, I thought they're very was, much alive and well. I never was quite sure because nobody ever explained it. <laughs> yeah. The one Don't thing I never found out is, is, is one thing I never found out is do they ever freeze so I'm going to have right, to cover right. that in the, in the next book. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that down in Florida, but yeah, where you live, I'm sure that is a problem, or could be. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah. And another one, too, uh, yeah. you talk about in the book, and again, I grew up in Long Island, had my own uh, you know, lawn-cutting business going through school. You talk about uh, about lawns, which everybody kind of takes for granted in a sense. What what it is, it's you know a lot of green grass, but there's a lot more to it, right? A lot of, a lot of benefits to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I always try to dive a little bit into the history of, of things before I, I talk about other things. And, you know, apparently lawns um, knocking down the grasses and, and trees in the area gave defenders of castles a better view of anyone who was trying to invade <laughs> and so uh, there's you know that's kind of one of the explanations how how lawns came in to be uh louis the 14th uh, when, when they did versailles or uh made lawns popular and and they you know just continue to be popular today they they offer you know cooling they they filter uh particles out of the air um you know some people give them a bad rap but uh we do some things wrong with them we we overwater them mm -hmm. and so the roots don't have to grow very deep uh and then so we have to keep watering them and we uh clean up the clippings and so rather than them turning into fertilizer we wind up using uh you know bagged fertilizer so um i i, I talk with a couple of uh turf specialists and uh, at the University of Wisconsin and got some interesting information. It gave me a way to make money when I was a kid, so that was good. <laughs> Cutting them. <laughs> That's why I like it. <laughs> well, you have, you have so yeah. many things in the book, and we just touched on two or three right now, but uh, uh, as you said, I guess in the beginning, it was a fun book for you to write, right? Just to kind of do this research. Yeah, it really was. I, You know, I I visited the Trash Museum of New York City and and uh, spent time with pigeon racers and yeah. and all sorts <laughs> of other things and and uh, and walked with the Nordic Walking Queen and you know I'll just throw in that walking has become so popular these days and they found that people who walk kind of focusing on nature or you know something to to investigate they have better walks they have a better you know uh, sense of self and attitude and so this book has literally hundreds of things to, to check out while you're while you're walking around the block Walk Around the Block is the name of the book, and we've been talking with uh, Spike Carlson today. And Spike, can you give out your website, if you will, or some place to get more information on the book? Yeah, it's spikecarlson.com, and that's spelled with an S-E-N. And the book is available in ebook, audiobook, hardcover. It's available on Amazon, your local bookstore, uh, any which way, and uh, I, I think you're going to enjoy the combination of information and entertainment and inspiration. Great. Spike, pleasure talking to you again. Let's not make it eight years before the next visit, but uh, good talking with you, and we'll do it again. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Stan Brock. Thirty years ago, I formed Remote Area Medical to help people overseas. But then we found generations of families in America isolated by poverty from the health care they need. Together, we can take dental, vision, and medical help to a million adults and their kids, right here at home in the United States of America.